Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Offices of Kitty and Norton. Who's calling, please? Oh, Mr. Colligan. I didn't recognize your voice. You seem to have a cold. Oh, I see. It's just sinus, huh? No, Mr. Killian isn't back from Chicago yet. No, Mr. Norton isn't here either. No, he hasn't got nothing wrong with him. He's just married and healthy and gonna have a baby. That's the life. <laughs> sure, maybe I'll try that one of these days, too. <laughs> You're the limit, Mr. Colligan. Okie dokie. No message, then. Look, if it's anything important, I can reach Mr. Norton. He's only up in his country place working on the freight terminal plans. That's why I don't like to disturb him unless it's absolutely necessary. Okay. I'll just tell him that the cement contract is okay. Yeah, on our terms. Nice to talk to you, Mr. Colligan. Sure. Okay. Okie dokie. Goodbye now. Lottie, what would you do if O.K. and okie-dokie hadn't been invented in the English language? Oh, Mr. Norton, I didn't hear you come in. (laughs) Gee, I didn't expect you this morning. Gosh, you scared me. How long have you been standing there anyhow? Well, long enough to realize what a jewel you are, Lottie. Yeah, I know. Finish it. I'm a jewel, the kind that's a diamond in the rough. (laughs) Okay, so I never had a college education. You don't need it, Lottie. You don't need it. I'd like to talk better for Mr. Killian's sake. I mean, anything less than perfect isn't good enough for him. Lottie, here's a little secret. Mr. Killian's devoted to you. Okie dokies and all. Oh, gee, I'm certainly glad to hear that, because I'm certainly crazy about him, too. He scares me pink. Because of his manners, you think he disapproves of you, but underneath he sort of disapproves of himself. That's the way I dope it out. Well, you've doped it out as well as you handle that old battle axe, Colligan. I told him you wouldn't be in for another week or so. Say, what are you doing in New York? I brought Mrs. Norton down in the car. The doctor wanted to see her for a final checkup. Oh, gee, how is she? Okay. (laughs) She'll be along any minute. She stopped off to do a little shopping. Gee, you look great, Mr. Norton. All sunburned. Well, I took a couple of hours off from work yesterday and went trout fishing. How's it going? Fine, fine. They're running fine. I mean the freight terminal, not the trout. Oh, oh the freight terminal. The freight terminal's okay. <laughs> oh, gee, you're the limit, Mr. Norton. That's another thing wrong with Mr. Kidden. He don't know how to joke with people. He's all tied up, like in a knot. You sort of feel sorry for him. Say, I hope there's nothing wrong with his son. He's sure crazy about that boy of his, even though he don't show it. What do you mean, Lottie? About there being something wrong with his son. Oh, I'm not saying there is. They didn't say there was either. They just wanted to reach Mr. Killian. Who wanted to reach him? The school. The headmaster of the school up in Massachusetts someplace. Oh. And I said Mr. Killian was in Chicago, so he said he'd phone Mrs. Killian. Well, was that all he said? Mm, that's all. I guess it's just measles or chicken pox. They're always having epidemics in those prep schools. Yeah, possibly. I think I'll telephone Mrs. Killian to find out if anything's wrong. Oh, I phoned her already. I wanted to make sure she got the message. And did she? Fat chance. The hotel said she'd gone off someplace. Some political shindig, if you ask me. Don't she ever stay home and things like other women, I mean? Just act normal? Hmm. Trouble is, I guess, she hasn't got a home. Just a hotel. <laughs> You're a contradiction, Lottie. Huh? Me? Contradiction? Is that bad or good to be? I'm married to one, so I think it's good. Hello, darling. Hello. Did you get your shopping done? Nope. Doors are jammed, so I said, oh, for heaven's sake, it's easier to do without. <laughs> and cheaper, too. Hello, Lottie. Mm, hello, Mrs. Norton. Gee, you look fine. You both do. What do you mean, we both do? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Norton's got a sunburn better than he can get at the barber's shop. Yes, he does look wonderful. The country is just gorgeous this time of year. I can't wait till we get back. Can you? How long will you be, David? I just have to go over a little mail. Oh. Well, there's nothing important I haven't attended to or sent up to Eastbrook. Well, I want to do a little phoning. Uh, if you don't mind my using my office for a few moments, Lottie. <laughs> oh, go right ahead, go right ahead. Make yourself at home. Oh, thanks. Come on, darling. Yeah. Come on with me a minute and get off your feet. See you later, Lottie. Mm, okay. 
You're awful sick so forlorn, David, with the blinds down. Well, that's soon remedied. Looks like it missed you anyway. Everything all right since you've been gone? Fine, fine. Lottie's wonderful, isn't she? I'm lucky she's not beautiful, too. I mean, she's nice looking, but, but not dangerous <laughs> with that voice. <laughs> yes, she is. She is what? What you said. David, you weren't listening to a single thing I said. You're just staring down at your desk. No, I'm sorry. What did you say? I said I thought you were in love with Lottie. Well, since you found out, yes. <gasps> I cannot live without her. Oh. That's no joke. Well, <laughs> I can't say I blame you. <laughs> Darling, what's the matter? Nothing. Why? You look like something's bothering you. Well, heavens help me if I really did have a secret to keep from you. You've got eyes like an x-ray. It isn't Mom, is it? I mean, everything's all right out in the country? Of course, Sally. We, we only left a couple of hours ago. <sighs> I get such crazy ideas. You know, you're still a little mama baby. I know. I try to get over it. Maybe after my baby gets here, I'll grow up. Who's to say what's grown up? Maybe one of these days, psychologists will change their tune and come to the conclusion that more love, not less love, is what's needed in this sorry old world of ours. Then I'd be right in style if they did. Come in. It's only me. Jeffrey Killian's outside. Well, that's a relief. Roger's son? Yes, I'm glad to say it is Roger's son. He was what was worrying me. Uh, send him in, Lottie. He doesn't want to see you. He just asked for his father, and when I said he was in Chicago, he said, never mind, he'd leave him a note. That's what he's doing now, writing a note to his father. Gee, Mr. Norton, that kid looks awful, and it ain't measles. If you ask me, the school telephone because he's in some sort of trouble. Oh, nonsense, Lottie. It's the end of the exam period. All the, the old kids look tired out. Maybe, but it ain't that kind of tiredness. He's white around the gills, and his mouth looks all tight. Looks like he's lost weight, too. You're a cheerful one. Well, just see that he doesn't leave. Now, I'll, I'll be there in a minute. And no matter what I say or do, play along with me. Mm, sure thing. I got you. Right. Okie dokie. What is all this about, Jeff? I don't know yet. But I think Lottie isn't too far from the truth. Roger's been upset about him. I know that much. He's made two or three trips back and forth to the school in the past few weeks. I know. The youngster's been in some sort of an emotional tangle. Roger hated to leave for Chicago. What about Mrs. Killian? After all, if Jeff is in a jam of some sort, he's got his mother to go to. His mother's away. Oh, then the poor boy's here alone. Maybe we could take him up to the farm with us. That's exactly what I'd like to do, darling. How wonderful. But I have a feeling it's not going to be an easy thing to wangle. Say, so maybe you could manage him better alone, David. You know, sort of man to man. Why did I wait in Roger's office? Darling, you are a woman in a million. Thank you. <laughs> Make yourself scarce. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Come back. Where will we put him? Mother's in the guest room. In the nursery. Only don't tell him it's the nursery. It'd hurt his pride. Call me when you're ready. Can you pull up the blinds in Roger's room by yourself? What do you think I am? <laughs> uh, Lottie, take a letter, will you? Okay. Well, well, Jeff, I, I forgot it was the end of the term. Come in. Come in. Great to see you. I was just leaving, sir. I won't bother you, Officer. Oh, no bother? Well, well, you've, you've put on a couple of good inches since I saw you at Easter. You must be easy six foot, huh? Five foot, eleven and a half, sir. That's near enough. Come on in the office and have a chat, Jeff. Mrs. Norton's using your father's room to do some telephone. No, no really, sir, I... Your but... father ought to be back at the end of the week. Hope it isn't too hot in Chicago. Here, my office is a lot cooler. I don't know how Lottie stands the heat in this cubbyhole of hers. Mm, I don't mind it. Hi. Now, Jeff, have a seat over there by the desk. Cigarette? No, thank you, sir. Home for good? School's over early this year, isn't it? It isn't over for another ten days. Now, look here, as long as your father's out of town, I believe your mother's away too, isn't she? Yes, she's away. I went to the hotel, but she's away. Well, that's our good luck. Since you're all alone in town... Why not drive back to the country with Claudia and me this evening? It's very kind of you, sir, but that would be impossible. Oh, you're going back to school? I've been kicked out of school, Mr. Norton. We call it expelled. Kicked out describes it better. I was kicked out of school once. Why? Oh, got in a scrape of some kind. They 
details have gotten a little blurred through the years. But it seemed a lot more serious then than it really was. Well, what'd your father say? He was a pretty good scout about it. Fathers are, you know. Mine won't be. He detests a cheat. My mother does, too. My parents are very important people. They won't like to have a cheat for a son. Now, come now. That's, that's a pretty harsh word. That's what I am. I, I cheat in the exams. They've kicked me out. Did you ever cheat exams, Mr. Norton? Jeff, I never had to. I had to. I, I couldn't help it. I see. You, you don't see, Mr. Norton. But I think I do, Jeff. David? Yes, dear. Why, Jeff, hello. I'm terribly glad to see you. Hello, Mrs. Norton. I, I, I was just leaving. Where were you going, Jeff? To enlist. You're not quite old enough, Jeff. I can lie about that, too. Jeff, I think it's wonderful when a boy wants to enlist. I, I hope when I have a son, he's going to have that kind of courage. But with your father away, don't do it. At least not till you've talked it over with him. This is different, Mrs. Norton. I've got to. Well, maybe, but I, I wish you'd do us a favor first. It's a, a nerve to ask you, but if you could, I... What favor? Well, we're so behind in outdoor work on the farm. No help to speak of, and David's been tied up so on those freight terminal plans. But I wouldn't give for six foot of brawn and muscle to do a little mowing and raking. It's an awful nerve of me, isn't it, David? But when I saw David stand, Jeff standing here so big and strong, it just seemed like a gift from heaven. It's no gift from heaven, Mrs. Norton. Your husband wouldn't want me on the place. Did you ring, Mr. Norton? Yes, Lottie, I did. And if Mr. or Mrs. Killian telephones, tell them we've kidnapped Jeff. He's going to pitch in and help us get some work done on the farm. Okay, Mr. Norton. Okie dokie. Dum, dum, ba -dum, dum, dum, dum. In the midst of a day's shopping, it's nice to pause at the friendly Coke cooler for ice cold refreshment. And that's easy to do these days because you find Coca Cola chilled and ready for you in department stores, grocery stores, service stations, around the corner from anywhere. While you're enjoying an ice cold drink, remember to take a carton home, too. The six-bottle carton is only a quarter, which you'll agree is mighty little to pay for so much delicious refreshment. Mm. Hi there, Mr. King. Oh, Lottie. Hello there. Hmm, I haven't seen you in a long time. Mm, been having my nose glued to that typewriter machine. Huh. Well, what do you think of it? The typewriter? No, young Jeffrey Killian. Well, he does seem to be in quite a mess. Yeah, quite. I think Mr. and Mrs. Norton is being swell about him, but it ain't going to be no easy job having him around. You speak from experience. I speak from intuition. Nice word, huh? It means that I got a feeling that it's not going to be any cinch having that kid around the house. Well, we'll see. You'll see, all right. By tomorrow, Mr. and Mrs. Norton will find they're trying to chew more than they should a bit off. <laughs> well, thanks for the warning. I'll uh, pass it on to Claudia and David. Uh, so long, Lottie. And as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.